The Nintendo Switch is one of my favorite systems. It allows you to play amazing quality games at home, on the go, and you get to use the same cartridge regardless of where you're playing. And whether we're talking about the original Nintendo Switch or the Switch OLED playing here behind me, it's a fantastic experience, to a point. One of the things I have never been the biggest fan of are these guys here, the original Nintendo Joy-Cons. There's so much room for improvement, especially for someone with bigger hands. I think if you're a kid, these are gonna be great. For someone like me, a little bit on the small side. And that's where the folks from Nixie have sent us a new set of Joy-Cons that hopefully address that situation. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rocksaw Productions. Thanks for stopping by and checking this out. And thanks to Nixie Gaming for sending us a set of these new wireless controllers for the Nintendo Switch to check out. We've checked out a few of their controllers in the past. I'll have it linked for you right up there. These promise to completely replace your stock Joy-Cons with ones that are more precise, more comfortable, and offer additional features. Do they measure up? Let's go take a closer look. All right, so here we have the Nixie wireless controllers for NS. I've been told by a couple manufacturers the reason why they do NS versus Nintendo Switch is if they actually put Switch or PlayStation or Xbox, it holds up how long it takes to get through customs. How true that is or not, I don't know, but that's just what I've been told. On the side, nothing really there. On the back, it, it walks you through everything included. So you get one joy pad for the Switch. They call it the Switch. One frame, one USB charging cable, one user manual. After receiving the product, please charge the handle with the data cable we used should be provided for two hours. So looking here, this is the YS37 model with input voltage of four and a half to five and a half volts. Uh, charging voltage, five volts. Charging time, about two and a half to three hours. Wireless connection distance, uh, about 10 meters it looks like. And then here you can see it does have wireless control. Dual vibration, six axis gyroscope, and you can utilize it wired and wireless. So let's open this up. Again, thanks to Nixie for sending a, along a set of these for us to check out. I've been impressed with their stuff in the past. So uh, there's the joiner. USB charging cable and USB-C, good to see. C, C. Instruction sheet, and then we do have, there are you, uh, come off of there. Now these are the large, I've tested the slimline ones in the past. These feel closer in size, I would say, to like the, um, the Split Pad Pro. D-pad feels pretty good. The triggers up top feel pretty good. Now, it does appear as well, if you look closely, yes, these are not just molded in like placeholders. These are legit SR, SL buttons. So you can use this sideways as a Joy-Con. Now, having a D-pad versus the ABXY buttons makes things a little bit more challenging, but it's an option. Same thing here with the right side Joy-Con is those are, you know, SRSL, you know, legit, A, B, X, Y, home button, plus button. And then it looks like you do have mappable buttons on the back. And then there's a T and an M here. We'll have to check in the manual what those are for. And also right there, T and M. Slides into the joiner. And this looks like it is literally just a single piece of, of molded composite to um join the two halves of the controller to basically give you a pseudo uh pro controller now this does feel wide to me um but it doesn't feel bad i mean the ergonomics are pretty good buttons feel super clicky now one thing you notice all these buttons i'm hitting now finally that one lit up uh, but what we are going to do if you look on the bottom there's a charging port there and there we're going to connect these up to a switch first and foremost to see if they will charge off of the switch. Second of all, I want you to notice, look at the gap here between the body of the controller itself and the joiner. There's a, there's quite a significant step there. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to, like, I don't like where my fingers fall back in there. Um, I would like to see this thicker to be equal height to this but it's well balanced, it feels decent. Let's go ahead, let's hook this up to a charger and then we'll hook it up to our switch. 
While we're waiting for everything to charge up, let's go ahead and take a look through the instruction manual real quick. And wow, that's some really small print. So you have the side rail, L button, ZL button, lock, set button, turbo button, back button, uh, USB type C charging port and everything, capture button, the main frame, home button, basically all the buttons that you would assume that you would have. The Joy-Con wireless Bluetooth is the standard controller for the Nintendo Switch. It can be connected to the host screen via the rail and can also be used wirelessly without the rail. Uh, major advantage on this over something like the Split Pad Pro. Uh, Joy-Con is equipped with motor vibration, blah, 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 okay. Uh, with wake up and one click connect, no NFC function, so will not work with the Amiibo. A no infrared camera does not support live upgrade, only a local upgrade package. Watch you through the parameters and everything on here, nothing to earth shattering connection method should be able to just uh, connect the Joy-Con to the rail and have it work automatic sleep when Joy-Con is installed on the host the Joy-Con will automatically uh, go into sleep mode if the host screen turns off so basically turn off the switch turns off the controller press the home button to wake up the host when Joy-Con and the host are separated Joy-Con will go into sleep mode automatically if there's no operation within five minutes walk you through the Charging instructions, turbo function. Press the A, B, X, Y, you know, basically any of the buttons, and then the turbo button to set the turbo function. Uh, so that goes for the left or the right Joy-Con. And then to clear, uh, press the A, B, X, Y uh, for a third time. Oh, you can basically do an auto turbo, and then a third time will clear it for you. If it's set uh, successfully, it will have a vibration indicator when you press the button. So the back button, the left Joypad press up left down right zl l l3 shooting key and then the m key to set the back that's a hell of a lot to remember um so don't lose this uh you can also adjust the motor vibration function and the ambient light it's a constant light mode press the t and the joystick at the same time uh wants to change the color 12 eight colors okay and it has a breathing mode as well walks you through uh calibration upgrading and more so we're gonna go through first of all the ambient light adjustment so press the t key and the joystick in at the same time so that's the t key right there not to be confused with the tiki 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 room and the tiki 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 room the birds will sing and the flowers bloom in the tiki 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 room sorry um not sorry well we'll try it in a second here let's connect it to our switch and we are going to go first just to the regular switch and we are going to disconnect it from here i will say the center rail eh, way too tight my god it is something that i think will free up over time man especially this right one this right one is super super tight like a toyger now i know some of you may be wondering a white switch isn't that a switch oled no this is my original switch i will have a tutorial link right up here how I switched it with the, uh, I call it the Stormtrooper grip case and everything. So we'll slide the right one. Wow! So that tightness is on the Joy-Con itself, not necessarily on the grip. Okay. So there you see both pop down for a second. We'll hit the home button. So there's the blue. Purple. Actually, that's an even brighter purple. There's the, uh, kind of red and blue. There's red, kind of orangish yellow, yellow, green. So we have that same on the both. I'm going to turn off the overhead light for a second, just so you can see a little bit more just how bright those are, because those are actually really, really bright. Still got a bit of a reflection. I apologize for that, um, but pretty, pretty bright. So we are going to start off in handheld mode here with the original Nintendo Switch and Andro uh, Donos 2 is just an amazing shoot 'em up. I absolutely have fallen in love with this game. Uh, we are going to go ahead and dive in. And one thing we are going to do too is we are going to utilize the Turbo. And this is a game that's available through VGNY Soft. Um, these guys just continue to crank out amazing game after amazing game. Okay. And we want to do Turbo, so we are going to do Turbo and B. 
Although for something like this, I think it would automatically have a turbo shot, but feels good. We're going to pause. I'm going to turbo B again. Now this should be, in theory, the auto shot. And it is. Look at that. A little bit like cheating, but you know what? I don't care. Oh, this is playing great. Let's try the D-pad for a bit. D-pad is pretty good as well. Oh, I got flown into from behind. I was able to pick up two upgrades right away. Oh, got flown into again. I love just the way you can cycle through your weapons on this, too. Yeah, super tough. So, we're going to pause, go home. And there you can actually hear it doing the uh, turbo. So, we'll turbo and A. Um... That felt pretty good. I'm going to switch over to my Switch OLED now. And just to show that it is a physically different Switch, here's the Switch OLED. Here is my original Switch. You can see the backs are different. Um, I've just been accused from time to time of not actually using two different systems. So we'll swap off the original Joy-Con, slide the new ones from Nixie into place. Now one thing I do want to kind of point out here real quick is just how much wider these are than the original. You can see the width of the original right here. Uh, so these are considerably, considerably wider. Uh, we are going to go and turn up the brightness so you can see a little bit better. And man, I will say one thing that I really have appreciated about the Switch OLED is when shooting gorilla style with something like this, uh, it works perfectly. And as you saw too, just by connecting, it paired to the Switch OLED. So no complicated pairing process. Absolutely love that. We're going to dive into some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, although, let's see. I want to go back to the main menu. Well, I guess we'll we'll play a little bit of this. We'll go to the original TMNT. And I am a Donatello fan. I always have been. We've got to get April out. Ooh, good vibration there. Oof. Took a hit there. And as you can see, I am using the D-pad, and it's working just fine. You can maybe even hear the rumble going. So, working good with this. Now, one thing, it is actually connected to the original Joy-Con, so those are even rumbling in the background right now, too. We are now going to move on, though, because I want to check out the overall responsiveness, as I almost always do. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Edition is just a great test of the functionality of the D-pad, the analog stick, just to see you know, if there are any issues pulling off moves. And we'll pick Ryu as we always do. And who do we have? Guile. Okay. We're going to start off with the D-pad. So far, so good. I think I'm going a little bit too fast on the rolling of the d-pad oh there goes the perfect got him was not able to pull off the dragon uppercut i did try a couple of times let's try now with the analog stick perfect all right that's pretty impressive that's what we like to see now what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually take the uh the nixie controllers off of here and we're going to try desktop mode yeah, this is a much more comfortable way for me personally to play. Um, if you like a larger gamepad, I think using it in handheld mode is going to be the way you're going to want to go. For me, I do like a smaller controller, um, so this is much more comfortable. We'll test out some punch-out action here. And uh, this way as well, we can kind of test lag, latency, delay, and furthermore... Now, I will say that the D-pad isn't the best out there that I've ever used, but it's it's definitely very usable. Buttons seem pretty responsive here, too. Press a button, and it responds. Exactly what, uh, what you want to see. So, no additional lag or delay over what uh, the original Joy-Cons would have. As you can see, we're just able to knock down Glass Joe, no problem there. Let's go to the N64 online and see how it works with that. I have to say, too, I do really dig 
this transparent case on here. But then again, I always love seeing how things work. So definitely huge for me. All right, so what we're going to do here, we're going to pause. We're going to turn on turbo for fighting, or for firing. All right, that turbo is pretty good. Now, the one thing you do lose when you turn on turbo is the charge shot, so something to be aware of. This is terrific. I mean, I know Falco just said this is horrible, but uh, responsiveness on this is really, really good. I'm, I'm really quite happy with this. Yeah, the turbo on here is is phenomenal. I'm 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 digging this and then some. Yeah, I have to say overall this is working really well with the uh, Switch Online at least with uh, with Star Fox. So let's go to the game selection. Let's try another game for our good buddy Jay. Sing it with me, Jay, 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 Jay. Jay. Yeah, the vibration too. Like I mentioned earlier. Super, super good. Yeah, this is feeling great. Whoa, you're not looking great, though. Yeah, I mean, there you can see how the analog stick, very precise, going through Yoshi's range of motion. Uh, very happy with this. This is working terrifically. Like I say, the D-pad is pretty good, too. I, I've got no major complaints here. Final game we are going to check out is Horizon Chase Turbo. Absolutely love this game. This is a terrific game to go ahead and, uh, as far as racing games go, one of my favorites on the system. So overall, what do I think of the Nixie Joy-Cons for the Switch? Um, I gotta say, it's pretty good. It is a... If you are considering the Split Pad Pro, this is vastly superior. I'll just tell you that first and foremost. I think it's more comfortable. It can be used uh, separate from the Switch. It does have those built-in batteries. Um, I think it is better balanced than the Split Pad Pro. Um, I do like the grip shape itself more as well. Um, oof. The vibration is terrific. I do like the, the LEDs behind the control sticks. Uh, those are pretty good. No sign of Joy-Con drift to this point. And quite honestly, I have never had any of the Nixie controllers that I have tried out. None of them have suffered from Joy-Con drift. Um, doesn't mean that they can't. I just have not experienced it to this point. Um, the D-pad feels pretty good. It's definitely usable. The analog sticks, I think, feel terrific. Uh, button presses are you know very responsive. You know, you hit a button and it works. Uh-oh. We need to get some gas. Uh, but overall, this is an awesome experience. And if you are looking for a set of uh, Joy-Cons to either add to your Joy-Cons that you have or to have, you know, replacements that give you a more comfortable handheld version, these should definitely be high up on your consideration. Uh, now that we are out of fuel, it's time to wrap things up if we can hope to get some more gas. So there you have it, my look at the Nixie wireless Joy-Con replacements for the Nintendo Switch and the Switch OLED. What do I think about it? Well, I will admit that I do like this a heck of a lot more than the Split Pad Pro. I think they're more comfortable, I think they're slimmer, I think they overall work better, and I can use these like this. This, you have to get a new adapter for the Split Pad Pro. It was never designed to work wirelessly. These are. I love the LED colors. I'm a sucker for that type of thing. Between the flashing, the strobing, the breathing type of thing, going through all the different uh, functionality as well, super, super dig. Um, the turbo fire worked great. The analog sticks felt good. Now I know people are gonna ask, what about Joy-Con drift? Short test, you can't really tell. That's one of those things that after repeated use would show up. I will tell you in my test, I have not experienced any Joy-Con drift to date. Um, for me, the plastics are a little bit on the slickery side. Slick, 
slippery, slickery. Um, so maybe some kind of texturing on this would be good. Now that may just be on the clear one. They do offer different colors of this, which is you know really cool of them to do too. If you are looking for a you know Split Pad Pro type of controller that works better, that's more accurate, has more features, and you can use wirelessly, this is definitely something that you should consider checking out. Now, if you do want to see any other reviews of Nixie controllers that we've done here on the channel, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rockstar Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you wanna stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at castlemaniagames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.